So welcome to the next video in the New Packet Radio series. This is the first video where we're actually going to get our hands on the New Packet Radio and actually do a little field test just to show you guys how it works, how to set it up. This video is going to assume that you are kind of new uh, to networking a little bit, maybe a little new to the server client architecture, and maybe you just want to get into this New Packet Radio thing. So there might be some stuff if you guys are experienced, you might. Uh, can skip, but I'm going to keep this simple. That way anybody that buys this product will be able to take a look at this video and get up and running. So first, let's talk about the hardware. So I have two different models to show you. One is the base model. This is the one that's sold by the actual developer of the project. This is open source, so you can build it yourself or you can buy it. The links, of course, will always be down below in the description. This model has an Ethernet port. It has a USB connection. It comes with a USB cable, and that's for serial. Next, you'll notice there's four lights over here. A connection light, power, RX, and TX. RX and TX we don't need to talk about. The connection light is actually like a yellow light. If you have a connection, if, if you have a modem running in a client mo um, mode, and it has a connection to a master, this will be solid yellow. If you have a modem that is running in master mode, this will continue to blink. The power light will obviously come on when you have power. Here on the back, we have an antenna SMA connection. So in this case, I've just attached a telescopic antenna to. It's not the best, but for kind of mobile use running around, that's what's kind of worked for me so far. You also have an on-off switch, and you have a DC power connector. Now, this thing does come with a little barrel connector. You can connect in here. And uh, with that, let's talk about power on this thing just for a second. On the spec sheet, uh, the creator said that you can supply 5 volts from like a phone USB charger to this, uh, but it won't work very well. And in my uh, experiments, yes, that's the case. You, it'll power on, it just won't work, it's, or it, it works half the time. So don't even bother with 5 volts. You want to use 12 volts on this power connector. That means you can connect any basic lead acid battery to it as long as it's 12 volts. Uh, your lithium ion, whatever ham radio, usually 12 volt um, power supply you can get on there. You can connect there. Now, obviously, the the high quality power supply is going to have a um, a cleaner output signal, and you won't get as much electromagnetic interference. But that's the base model. This is sold by. Um, I'll put the call sign on the screen here. Created by. If you want to build it, it's there. The only drawbacks that I see is it only runs half a watt. You can use a DMR amplifier with it and uh, get up to 20 watts out of it, but that's that model. The next model I'm going to talk about is the upgraded uh, 2.0 or whatever. This is sold by call sign up here. He took the original um, uh, creator's pretty much blueprints for this thing and upgraded a few chips inside of it and added several watts of output power. So that's the big advantage of this guy right here is uh, instead of half of a watt, you can get up to like 5 watts out of it, depending on how much voltage you feed it, which in this case, 12 volts. You want to get 12 volts on this thing. Uh, you can go up to 16 to get a little bit of power, more power out of it, but uh, well, as you go up, you risk burning out the, uh, the circuitry in it. So to stay safe, I would keep it at 12 volts unless you have really good cooling. Uh, speaking of that, this does not come with an enclosure. This is your enclosure. Well, this is the one that I put on it. But it does have an SMA connector for the antenna. It has a power uh, power line here, a, a positive and a negative. You'll have to wire your own wires. And an Ethernet port for your computer. Also, it has a serial connection as well. And these are basically the same when it comes to configuring them. Uh, you're either going to set up a master or a client or both if you have two of them. In order to form a link between two stations, you need at minimum one master and one client. You can also have one master and many clients. But the point is, I'm going to show you guys how to set up a master and a client because that's what you need at minimum to create that connection. Now, it could be somebody else is a client near the master, or you, the master is somewhere else and you're a client connecting to the master. Either way, you're going to learn how to fix that in this video. There's two ways to set up the modem. You can either use USB serial connection, or you can telnet in over Ethernet. I'm going to show you guys how to do both. Uh, I'm going to set up the master with an Ethernet connection, Telnet. I'm going to set up the client with a serial connection. That way you guys see both ways 
but you can use it on either or. So the master modem is gonna be the one that pretty much gives out IP addresses to the other modems once they come online. It's gonna be the one that establishes those connections back and forth, the point-to-point -point connections, right? So ideally on your master, you'll want it wired into some type of computer that is serving resources. And that's why I am going to configure this one over the master. I'm gonna set a static IP address, that way all the clients already know where to pull resources from. And if this sounds foreign to you, don't worry, it's too, it's too easy. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna boot Windows. And you will need to download a program called PuTTY. Uh, PuTTY does telnet connections and it does serial connections. Next, what I want you guys to do, if you're following along, is take your master modem, because we're gonna do the master first. If you guys wanna to skip to the client, if, that's, if you're not doing the master, you can look down below, I've got the chapters set uh, you'll take your master modem and we're going to ethernet it into the computer we're going to connect one antenna and the reason we're connecting the antenna is just in case uh, it ships with the radio on at boot we don't want it broadcasting to an empty sma port because i don't know how sensitive these things are to damage when it comes to putting rf power into nothing right could just bounce back and destroy the radio or the modem or maybe not who knows but either way to be safe i'd connect an antenna to it and you need power. So ethernet connection to the computer, power, and your antenna. If you haven't watched my video before on setting up Windows for NPR, I would recommend looking at that. That way you're not congesting your network, but it's not necessary. Let's go ahead and move on to the computer where we have our ethernet attached. Now, the first thing that you'll need to do to get that connection is you need to set a static IP address on your computer. So to do that, there's many ways to get to the adapter option in Windows, but the way I do it is I hit start and I type in network connections. And this little view network connections thing will pop up. Now this is the window that you are looking for. Now you may have several things here. What you're looking for is the adapter that your NPR is plugged into. And it says identifying here. I know I'm using like a USB, so I know this is the one that I'm looking for. You're going to right click it and then go to properties. And once you're there, you should see internet protocol version four. We're going to click on that and go to properties again. And instead of obtain IP address automatically, we're going to hit use the following IP address. And we're going to type in 192.168.0.10. The subnet mask should fill itself in 255.255.255.0. And for the default gateway, we're going to type in 192.168.0.10. Um, Doesn't matter what you put on DNS because we're not using that right now. Hit OK. Hit Close. And now, if everything went right, uh, you should have a connection to your modem over the Ethernet. We can test that by opening up uh, Start. Type in CMD for command prompt. And now we're going to try to ping the modem itself. Now these things should ship with, with 192.168.0.253 for the telnet. So if you type in ping and then IP address, you should see reply. That means you have a connection to the modem. There are some cases that I've seen one of these guys shipped and it was not configured with that IP address. So what I had to do is the serial connection, which we'll do on the client. That way you all know how to do that. But once you've confirmed you have that connection, you're going to open up PuTTY, which is that program that I asked uh, you all to download a minute ago. And we're going to switch the connection type to other. And for the host name, we're going to type in 192.168.0.253. And then you're going to hit enter. Now, if everything went right, you should have a telnet connection to your modem. And it says ready. Now, there are several commands that I'm going to show you guys. Uh, more will be in the PDF that's provided with the product, but I'm going to show you guys the big ones. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to be display config. And there's not many config options, so it's nice and simple. The first is a call sign that we need to worry about is master. Uh, the next thing you want to worry about is frequency. RF power, modulation, um, modem IP, I keep mine set at 253, that's what it was at default, uh, IP begin, 
Now, if you're working in a master, which we are setting up a master here, that'll be the first address that is issued to clients that connect. Um, master IP size. So that's like how many, what's the max amount of IP addresses you want to give out. So right now I'm using the default, which is 32. Now, if we're going to set this as master, the first thing that you will want to do is type set is underscore master to yes. And that's a, the simple way to set whatever you want to set, right? You just type in set space, the name of what do you want to put in and then the value. So the reason I'm using 431 is because I opened up a, um, I opened up the radio spectrum and I found a nice spot on the 440 band that doesn't have interference, which I'll show you guys an example somewhere on the screen here. I found that to be 431.035. Now, if I wanted to set it at a different frequency, I would type in set uh, frequency, F-R-E-Q, U-E-N-C-Y. How do you spell frequency, right? Uh, let's say if you didn't want it at 431, maybe you wanted it at 432. Uh, dot 800 it's going to change it and then if you type in display config take a look now we're at set at 432.800 for a frequency so what's important here the the first thing is you want to make sure to set your call sign set it to your call sign we're configuring a master so when it says is master yes we want to do set is underscore master to yes Next thing, you want to find a frequency to use. Obviously, that needs to be a legal frequency in your country. Uh, for here, the 70 centimeter band, I'm using f whatever the 431. Dot, I think 035 or whatever it was. Pick a frequency to use and uh, be cognizant that uh, this is using about 100 kilohertz of bandwidth. So 50 to the left, 50 to the right. So this is your center frequency. So make sure that there's nothing to the left or to the right of your frequency. Next, the RF power. I believe the max is 127, but this isn't super documented. Uh, you can turn it down, but I was uh, the documents say it's nonlinear. I don't touch it. I leave it at 127. The next option is modulation. I'm going to put a chart on the screen of the different modulations. Boom. Now, the reason I have my modulation set to 20 is because that's the max allowable uh, modulation that I'm going to get in the U.S. If you live somewhere else, you might have a higher what's called symbol rate or baud rate or whatever on the frequency you're using. If that's the case, you can actually turn this thing up and get several hundred kilobits uh, connection. In the U.S., unfortunately, for our old FCC rules that we're still have in place for some reason, we're limited on uh, to 56 kilobits of usable bandwidth, uh, which puts us at about dial-up speeds. Not super great, but just be aware in the U.S., you want your modulation to be 20. The next option we want to look at is radio on at start. And now this is to toggle, obviously, if you want your radio to be on at start. Now this is a master. I want it to just start up. Like if I have to restart it, I want it to go straight into being a master. So I keep radio on at start to yes. Uh, telnet active, that can you can disable the ability for you to get in the telnet. Now if you turn that to no, the modem IP address, obviously, is the IP address of the modem. Um, other than that, everything should be set basically the same as what you had it. Now, once you're done, you're going to type in save. Now, there are two different save commands. You can do save or save config. I'm not going to do that because I just changed some stuff that I, I don't even remember what I had in before for the frequency. So, But for you guys that just set up your master, once you have your uh, layout exactly how you want it, you'll just type in save, save config. And now, whenever you reboot the modem, it's going to load up. It's going to turn on your radio if you have that set on, and it's going to load your configuration for the modem. That's exactly what you want. Now you have a master. If everything is working well, you'll be able to get on your modem, and uh, you can still go into Telnet, and you'll have a, probably a flashing connection light, and you'll see some RXTX every once in a while, depending on the clients. Uh, another couple of commands I want to show you now is going to be... Uh, status. Now some of this stuff doesn't work quite well for me that I've seen, but from status you should be able to see uh, your predicted uh, distance away from the station, this TA, the temperature, 
and your downlink and uplink bandwidth and your error rate. I haven't done enough testing to get those values to really start showing some stuff, but that's the status. You can also hit control C and you can do um, who. And this will show you a list of clients currently connected to your master if you're running as a master. So you'll get the IP address and you'll get the call sign. That's a pretty handy command. I'm going to show you guys one more uh, command that I found kind of handy because I was having to troubleshoot some uh, TX errors. To do this, your radio has to be off. So you'll type in radio, uh, radio off, radio on would turn your radio on. And you can actually do TX capitalized underscore test space and then amount of seconds. And that will basically just transmit a... Uh, a transmission just to see uh, you can see on like a radio spectrum you can make sure that that transmission is coming through anyways once you have that uh, basically just turn off your master turn it back on again make sure it's wired up to an antenna make sure it's wired up to a, con a computer that you can test with and you have a master that's one side of the connection now we're gonna move on to the client and for the client I'll be configuring the actual base model here over telnet so we're going to go ahead and just get out of that. We don't even have to, uh, we don't have to do anything there anymore. Now I'm just going to go ahead and disconnect the client up with serial connection to the computer. And uh, we won't even worry about configuring IP address or anything for this because we're not configuring it over Ethernet, right? Now I'm going to open a serial connection. So to do that, once again, we're going to open up PuTTY. This time, you want to hit your start button and you're going to type in device to open up the device manager on your computer. And we're doing this to see which COM port, which you can see COM port 8, that your modem is showing up as. So once you have that COM 8, you'll go back over to PuTTY, change over to serial, and you're going to type in whatever number for the COM port you're using. In my case, it's 8. Now, for the speed, we're going to have to change that. We're going to change the speed to 921600, 921600. Now, we're going to hit open. And if your modem's not on, you're just going to see a black screen that's normal. Now, I'm going to turn the modem on. Now, this uses the exact same commands as the other one, so I'm not going to go over the the commands we went over on the master. I'm going to type in uh, display config and we're going to talk about the differences and what needs to be the same. You can set your call sign. Now if this is running as a client and you'll know if you're a client or master because if there's someone in your area that already has this system and they're sharing resources they're going to be the master. You're going to connect to them and all the other clients are going to connect to them. If you are the one hosting or experimenting with two, you'll need the master. So we're going to do set is master to no on this. Next, the frequency needs to be the exact same thing as the master. And uh, if you guys need to be the master or you worry about the frequency, you'll need to watch the first part of the video. Your RF power, this one I have set to 100. Uh, the default is 127. So I'm actually going to type in set RF power to 127. Now, the modulation, we talked about that with the master, it needs to be the same as the master. 20 is the maximum allowed uh, legal in the United States, so we leave that at 20. Radio on and start, we talked about that with a master. Uh, if you want to turn on, if you want a radio to turn on as soon as you power it up, then you'll set that to yes. If you want to turn on the radio manually through Telnet or through um, Serial every time you turn the, the modem on, then you'll set that to no. If you don't want to watch the master part uh, to change options, all you do is type set space the option space what you want it to. Just like we just did um, the RF power. Now the next thing, Telnet Active, you can enable or disable the ability to Telnet into the router or the modem like we did on the master. The modem IP, uh, this is a IP address that won't matter too much and that's because 
uh, as a client, every time you connect to the modem, that modem, that master modem is going to assign your client a modem IP address. But if you'd like to telnet or something like that, that IP address is good to know. Now the IP begin, that doesn't really matter for you because you're a client. It's going to be whatever the uh, master gives you. Uh, DHCP active, yes. Uh, you want that on as a client. And what that means in layman's terms is uh, you can just connect a modem to a computer and that computer will automatically get the IP address that it needs uh, to communicate. That way you don't have to set a static IP or anything crazy like that. So once you have your modem configured, again, you'll need to call sign, make sure your is master is no, make sure that your frequency and your modulation and your radio network ID and your um, DHCP active are, are all set the same as the master. And um, well, the DHCP just needs to be yes. It doesn't have to be the same as the master, but it needs to be yes. All that other stuff, it needs to be the same as the master. Now, if you're connecting this modem, this client modem, to several computers, like through a switch, that's where you would change this client request size from one. I will only ever be connecting this client to one computer at a time. So I'll never need more than one IP address. But if you'd like to connect more, that's how you would do it. Just like the master, once you're done, you can type in save. And I also do save config. I'm not sure what the difference is, but I do both. And that will make it so that the next time you restart your modem, um, it will pull in the information that you just set. Now, as long as you configured the master all right and the client all right, we should now have two modems that are configured um, the way that we need to set them. Or if you're connecting to another master, you'll need its frequency and its network ID um, and its modulation. I think are those the big three that you'll need to set the same in your client in order to connect to somebody else. So make sure you get that information. Now, let's go ahead and plug one of these computer ethernets into a master and let's plug one into a client and see if they can ping each other through the radio. One thing I'll add real quick is on the client side, I forgot to mention, you don't want that static IP set. So back where we did the master and we configured a static IP, if you're connecting the computer to what would be the client, you want to go back into that Internet Protocol version 4 and go to obtain IP address automatically. After you do that, uh, usually if you just give it a second, if you had to reconfigure, it'll work. Let me show you guys what this looks like now that everything's physically running in the room, and then we'll move back to the computer for our testing. Here what I have is the server computer. This is where the master is going to be connected. On this computer, I am serving things, everything from a website, to a game server, to TeamSpeak, to IRC, all that stuff is all connected to one of my modems. This is the one with the higher power, so it's just connected to a 12 volt power supply. This is the computer, and it runs to an antenna right now that is outside. So that is the master. Now on the client side, I have a lithium ion battery, because this is meant to be mobile, right? It's not meant to be in the same room. And I have my second modem. And as you can see, I have a solid yellow light. That means I have a connection to the modem, to the master over here, so that's good. I have my antenna erected, and I have it wired to an ethernet port on my computer. So as of right now, this side of the room is talking to the server through ham radio. Let's move back to the computer and take a look and see what that entails. So on the client side, let's open up a command prompt. So type in CMD on the search. I'm just doing this to view my IP address. So I'm going to do IP config. Now, you'll know that the client side's working if your computer gets an IP address. In this case, I have 192.168.0.65. If you recall on the master, that was our first IP address we're handing out. Great. Now I know that the master is configured with a static IP. Remember that 0 0.10 address? To see if we can communicate over to the master, we're going to do ping 192.168.0.10. This is it. This is a connection between the two uh, computers over ham radio.
we're actually getting a ping back and forth. Now, let's try to pull a resource. I open up FileZilla. Uh, not File Explorer. FileZilla. And for the host, we're going to type in that 192.168.0.10. And for the username, I set up anonymous. I'm going to try to connect. And hopefully, we'll get a connection. All right, so this is the actually remote computer on the server over here. Um, we're going to open up a website example. And let's download, um, let's download an image to our desktop. Let's grab this, I don't know, it's title.png from the website example. So I'm going to right-click that and hit download. And down here, we're going to see that it's connecting. And this is a 164-kilobit uh, file, so it's about a tenth of a meg. It might take a minute uh, with our current network conditions. I had this working a lot quicker. It might be where I change that RF, that power, uh, power setting, or there could be something... Uh, running on one of these two that are slowing it down. All right, so successful transfers, it was able to transfer this image file. This came from, this file came from our master. It's goofy, it was like just some website example, but that was an image we downloaded. So next, let's do a, uh, let's connect to our TeamSpeak server. So I have a client here uh, this is just a TeamSpeak client. It's like a voice over IP thing. So I'm going to connect to a uh, our server address, which is 192.168.0.10. I am inside this TeamSpeak server. So this was uh, this is a TeamSpeak server running over on the master. We're connected over ham radio. If I had a microphone and somebody else had a microphone, we'd be able to chat like that. Next, I'll show you guys um, the IRC server. So this is just a client program that I have in my pack. The server is running over here. I have it in the list. I can right click it, hit connect. And now I am connecting over IP to our server. And of course, I can do slash join and do any old room like ham radio, something like that. Now I'm in the ham radio room. And if, I don't know, I type random stuff here. If anybody else was in this room, they would be over here, and I'd be able to do text chat. But I have a VNC server uh, running on the master. Everything's unencrypted. It's using a very old version of Tiger VNC, and I'm getting ready to use the client to over, uh, remote into that server over there. I'm going to hit OK, and now we're going to hit Connect. Now I am trying to remote VNC from our client to the master. This is a remote desktop connection, so theoretically it should show the master screen and it should allow us to control the mouse. All right, here's the master. We have loaded the master over remote desktop over ham radio, over the 70 centimeter band. Now the next question is, can we control anything? Very slowly. Now, very slowly in the middle of the screen here, you'll see the TeamSpeak server being <laughs> materialized. And from here, if we wanted to edit something very, very slowly, we could right click things and hit edit. Um, we can manage the server this way, right? So here I can go to open with notepad. I have no idea what this text file is, but uh, as you can see, I am running a remote desktop connection over ham radio. It's very slow. It's very ugly. Um, but you know what? It's being done. And I'm sure somebody else might come around, maybe behind me, and do some optimization. But that's a quick demo. I know this video was long, but I wanted to show you guys how to get it set up. I wanted to give you a little bit of what it's capable of. And next, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to build this server that you're seeing here. That way, if you want to buy a new packet radio and you want to serve as a master, or you want to serve resources to others, like a TeamSpeak server or a game server or any of that, you can do that. And uh, so we'll, I'll show you guys how to build what I have built here. And then very last but not least, that last video in the series is going to be start doing functional tests. Driving out how far can I drive and still maintain a connection uh, with several watts and this and that. And we're going to be kind of pushing things to its limit.
anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I'm glad that I was finally able to get some like hands on with, with over YouTube here. So hopefully if anybody's out there, they bought the product and they're confused about it, or they're thinking about buying the product and they wanted to see how it works. Hopefully this video kind of showed enough, uh, to either make your decision to, if you want to buy it or not, or if it's going to fit your, uh, what you want to do with it. But anyways, thanks you guys for watching. And I just want to give another shout out to the Flag and Torch Society. Those guys are awesome. It's kind of why I've been able to do this right here because I I wouldn't have bought uh, two of those on my own, but now I I am just because I see how great are the uh, the use case for these. So I've kind of purchased my own now. It's coming in, but um, I wouldn't have probably bought two outright if I hadn't been able to do some testing first. So yeah, big shout out to those guys over there and uh, I'll catch you later in the next video. 73 to you.